In the last video, we defined these functors gamma and lambda. I've been claiming repeatedly that these guys form an adjoint pair, that lambda is left adjoint to gamma, and this is the video where I'm going to say something about that. So I'm not really going to prove anything, I'm just kind of going to uh, sketch uh, what the relevant maps are to kind of say how the proof would start. So, I mean, maybe if I am feeling particularly masochistic one day, I'll go through and work out all of the details, but um, yeah, that's uh, probably not. But anyway, I'm going to at least say how the proof starts. So we're supposed to have an adjunction between lambda and gamma. And what that means is that we'd better have a bijection of HOM sets. On one side, we'll have a HOM. Um, yeah, so uh, gamma is the, or lambda is the left adjoint. So we'll be taking lambda of some pre-sheaf, then we'll have some space, and this had better be in bijection with hom of f f of gamma of e. And this hom set lives in the category of spaces over uh, spaces over x. And this is pre sheaves on X. So we have to exhibit this bijection and kind of say something about it being natural. I think uh, technically what that means is that we should actually be looking at, you know, we form some bifunctor that looks like this, and we want to show that there's a natural transformation, there's a functor morphism, a functor isomorphism between that bifunctor and this bifunctor. That's what the naturality condition amounts to. So I want to just say what the maps are going to be. I'll give a map going from here over to here, and I'll give another map going back in the other direction. So I'll say what these two things are, and then I'm just going to claim that they're inverses to each other. OK. So let's start with the map from, let's start with the map from HOM of lambda of f e into hom f gamma of e. I think this one is easier to define. So let me just uh, clarify really quick that here we're letting f is a pre-sheaf on x and e via this map P is a space over X. Just to kind of clarify the notation here. All right, so let's start with the map in this direction. And well, let's say that we have some, let's say that we have some map F going from lambda of F into E. In other words, let's say that we have some element of this set we should figure out what this maps to. Okay, well, this had better be mapping to some functor morphism. So, this is going to take a long time to write out. It's going to map to the functor morphism from f into gamma of e. We will recall this v, where on a given open set, where for u, for some open set u of x, we're going to define f of u into here of gamma of e of u is the map which takes the element a, the element a inside of here, maybe I should write it like this, where A maps to the composition from U. This is A dot, as I defined in the last video, to lambda of F, and then carried by our map F. We have to, you know, we define this thing. Hold on. We define this thing. We'd better use it sometime 
into gamma of e. So that's how we define the functor morphism. So the map f gets carried to uh, this guy phi, phi whatever, um, which is kind of defined like this. We pick an element in here, and let me just sort of say that this is indeed a section, so it will be an element in here. So for a inside of f of u, this is what it gets taken to. It gets taken to this section. OK. So yeah, I believe that's all that I want to say about this direction, about this map. This is the easier one to define. All right, so let's move on to going in the other direction. So now what we've got to do is go the other way. So now we'll have hom of lambda of f with a space e. We have to define some map going this way. This will be hom from f into gamma of e. OK, so I know of kind of two ways of defining this. Let me present both. Both of them require um, a lemma, well, a different lemma. So there are two definitions, and each definition is going to require a lemma to make sense. So let me go ahead and give the first definition by starting with the first lemma. So lemma, so gamma of E is a presheaf, right? So we can talk about taking its stock at a given point. So gamma of E of x, and here we're letting here we're letting x be a point inside of the topological space x. So the stock of gamma of E at x, that is equal to P inverse of x. Or again, P is the structure morphism. P is the structure morphism of E. It's a thing which exhibits E as a space over x. So, yeah, the lemma is just that this is true, that the stock of this sheaf is just equal to the fiber uh, of P over X. Okay, so let's say that we know that. Let's say that we have this lemma. Then we can define, we can give one definition of this map. So what's going to happen? Let's say that we have a functor morphism from f into gamma of e. In other words, let's suppose that we have an element of this set. And we had better define some element of this set that it gets mapped to. So the element that that's going to be, it's going to be a map from gamma of f into e. And what it's going to be is that, well, on f of x, right, remember this guy is a disjoint union. Remember this guy, maybe I'll make this uh, kind of running out of room here, but this guy is equal to some disjoint union of the points x and x of f of x. So what I'm saying is pick one of those things in the disjoint union, pick one of those stocks, f of x, and we'll define what the map f is, little f is, there. So it suffices to define it on each of the parts of the disjoint union, is all that I'm saying. And what it's going to be is this is going to map to p inverse of x, which is equal to, by the lemma, gamma of e of x. So I want to define, just to kind of clarify what the game is here, I want to define this map f. And because this space, lambda of f, is a disjoint union, it suffices to define f on each one of the parts of the disjoint union, to define it on each of the fibers. OK, and to define it on each of the fibers, you can kind of guess what I'm going to do. We're just going to use this equality here and say that this map is going to be the one induced by the functor morphism. So our functor morphism, phi over here, induces a map on stocks. And because it induces a map on stocks, it induces 
a map from this stock into the fiber by the lemma. So by the lemma, this gives a well-defined map from f of x into p inverse of x. And that, of course, is inside of E. So I guess maybe I should post-compose post with the inclusion into E, just to be totally formally correct here. So that's what this map is going to be. We start with the func functor morphism, and we basically just uh, take the induced map on stocks and uh, use that to define our map. OK, so that's one way of defining. That's one way of defining this guy. That's one way of defining this map in this other direction. And I claim, by the way, that this map, the one that we've just defined, is inverse to this guy, the one that we defined earlier. So these two maps are inverse to each other. I'm not going to prove that, but it's true, um, and that's why the adjunction works. OK, so as promised, uh, there's another way that I know of of defining this map, this one. So let me say what that is. OK, so again, the setup here is we want to go from well, we want to go into hom of lambda of f e. We're going into here from hom of f gamma of e. OK, and again, what we'll do is have a functor morphism over here. One well, maybe I should say what the lemma is first. So lemma, so for some open set u inside of x, and some element a inside of f of u, it's true that this map a dot that I defined in the last video, this map is a homeomorphism onto its image. onto its image. So in other words, u going into a dot of u via a dot is a homeomorphism. So that's the lemma that makes the second definition go through. OK, so as I've been saying, once we know this, we can find another way of defining this map. That other way is going to work as follows. So again, let's say that we have a functor morphism. Functor morphism from f into gamma v. And again, we're going to try to take this guy into a map from lambda of f into e. And the way that we're going to define this is by locally using these homeomorphisms. So what I mean by that is locally what we'll do is pick some open set u of x and then we'll maybe I should redraw uh, this. Okay, so such that locally Locally, this is what we do. So we have this thing, and we pick some open set u. And then we pick a dot from u into this guy, just like over here. We pick a dot from u into here. But we take its inverse, because it's homeomorphism, a dot negative 1. And this only makes sense, of course, on a certain small subset here. This is why this is all local. So this inverse isn't defined on all of lambda of f. This is just something we can do locally. There's some patch uh, that we can apply a inverse to and get a homeomorphism from that patch up here into u. So maybe I should um, maybe I should reflect that by saying what we're doing is maybe not quite as I've written it. We're going to take say a dot of u. It'll be included in here. We'll use this homeomorphism onto u. So this is a dot inverse. And then we're going to use the functor morphism. So this map is going to be phi of u of a. And this will be going into e. 
And that's locally how we define this map, is this composition here. So locally, for every point in here, we'll pick some um, neighborhood, a.u of it. We'll pick some a.u containing that point. And then we'll say, OK, fine. Use the inverse of a dot to get down to u, and then apply phi of u of a to get uh, from u into e. And this makes sense, because remember what this guy is. This guy, gamma of e, consists of sections. So that's maps from, what I mean by this is that gamma of u is a certain, maybe certain, certain maps. And again, this is clarified in an earlier video, kind of said at greater length, certain maps from u into e. So if we start out with an element uh, a of f of u, and we apply this guy to it, we're going to get an element of gamma of e. And an element of gamma of e, or sorry, an element of um, gamma of e evaluated at u will be a map. It'll be a map from u into e. So maybe let me say that a little bit more clearly. So the way that this is working is we're picking some element a inside of f of u. To make this little, to make all of this stuff work, that's what we're doing. We're picking some element a inside of f of u. And then we're saying, well, phi of u is going to give us an element of gamma of e of u. And let's just call that guy phi u of a. That's all that I'm trying to say. And this element, this guy, this is a map. This guy is a map. By the definition of gamma of e. This guy is a map from u into e. And that's why it made sense for me to kind of uh, write it down here in this diagram. OK, so this is another definition of this morphism. It's another definition of this map up here. Um, it's equivalent to this one that I gave earlier. And again, it's going to be inverse to this guy. So that's all that I want to say about the adjunction, I think. Um, you know, the way that we would prove an adjunction is by exhibiting these isomorphisms. I mean, it's typical to ignore the naturality stuff, right? So I don't feel too bad about doing that. I feel a little bit bad about not checking that these maps are isomorphisms, um, but they are. So given these two maps, and they're inverse to each other, so that exhibits the desired isomorphism. And that shows the adjunction, barring naturality. Okay.